All right. So today is a review day for your exam, which is tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. So what is it that we're talking about? Yes, ma'am. So fall 2018, sorry, let me get to the right folder here. Um, it is recording, but I have no intention of having my TA actually upload it. I just, it's automatically set to record. Can she upload it? I can ask if you remind me. I don't know whether or not she'll do it because I specifically said, I don't think we need to worry about that, but whatever. You're on your own. I pay for my TAs out of my. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sorry, fall 2018, right? This one. Okay, so the non cumulative. And which question was that? Number 29 and 30. Okay, apparently people ask about this pretty regularly because it opened up exactly to that. All right. So. For number 29 in particular here, um, we're told that an electrical load draws 27 kilowatts at a power factor of 0 0.95 lagging, and I'm asking for the complex power. So what quantity is this 27 kilowatts? Average power, absolutely right. So this is P, and then this 0 0.95 is the power factor. So S should be P divided by power factor with an angle of the inverse cosine of the power factor. And I'm putting a positive sign on the angle because our power factor was given to us as a lagging quantity. So that's going to look like 27 divided by 0 0.95 with an angle of the inverse cosine of 0 0.95. And I'll just throw that into my calculator really quick. Twenty six point three one six with an angle of 18.195 degrees. Uh, kilovolt amperes. So all of these should have been kilovolt amperes. And looks like the right answer isn't available because I made, oh, I did 25, not 27. Let me fix that. 28.421, sorry, I typed the wrong thing in. Angle 18. Oh, the one that was highlighted, gee, I'll be damned. Uh, so number 30 as well. So we are told that an electrical load absorbs 35 kilovars or excuse me, uh, kilovolt amperes while supplying 20 kilovars. And we want to know the power factor at which the load operates. So um, let me explain exactly what I'm going to be doing here. My power factor uh, is, by definition, the ratio of the average power over the apparent power. We have apparent power right here. This guy right here is Q. And since it's supplying, we're going to treat this as a negative quantity. Okay. So I need to figure out from those two pieces of information how to determine P. Okay. So S, um, the apparent power is going to be equal to the square root of p squared plus 
Q squared because it's just a complex number and that's how I find the magnitude of a complex number, right? So working backwards from that, we'll find that Q is just the square root of the magnitude of S squared minus, uh, sorry, P is the magnitude of S squared minus Q squared. So square root of 35 squared minus 20 squared comes out to be 5 root 33. Twenty-eight point seven two three. Uh, this would be kilowatts. Divide that by thirty-five. Zero point eight two zero six. So this is twenty-eight point seven two three kilowatts divided by thirty-five kVA. This equals 0 0.821. Would this be leading or lagging? Leading because it's supplying kilobars. Absolutely right. Just for the sake of argument for any of you guys that aren't understanding this part right here, that's literally just um, Pythagorean theorem backwards. If I know the hypotenuse and I know one of the legs, how can I solve for the length of the other leg? Can you draw? Yep. <laughs> All right, what's next? Liam. This uh, no, that might be on me, actually. Um, so let's go through the process here. I distinctly remember, I think, I don't think their correct answer is available for number 22 here. Um, so for number 21, we are looking for this voltage, which is hopefully very obviously just going to be, let me write it here. Uh, the phasor voltage V plus is just going to be 5 angle 45 degrees amps times negative. Let's make this milliamps just so that the numbers don't come out ridiculous. Apparently, I've got an issue with the units on this test. Um, negative J2 kilo ohms. And so that's going to be 10 angle. Let's see negative 45 degrees volts because uh, 5 times 2 is 10 and positive 45 plus negative 90 is negative 45. So from there we would just apply Kirchhoff's current law at this node. So we'd be adding this current, this current, and this current together. So that's going to look like that voltage V plus over J3 kilo ohms plus that voltage V plus over 4 kilo ohms plus V plus minus V out over minus J5 kilo ohms is equal to zero. Um, so we'd have. V out is equal to that, if my algebra is correct. And so we can just throw that into our calculators really quickly. So 10 angle negative 45, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3i plus 1 over minus 5i 
all of that times minus five I fourteen point one six seven angle negative sixteen uh, excuse me negative one sixty three point oh seven two degrees volts is be out which is very much not on there. Yeah, so I just had a brain fart when I made this test out. Very unsurprising to me anyway. Yep. Patrick, what's up? Nope. Took all those out when the dean told me that I was making my tests too long. So nothing like that on the exam. What's next? Yes. Twenty four. All right, so we're asked to find the effective uh, value of the current waveform here. So we'll just formally. I'm going to draw something here and I'll explain why I need it in just a moment. Okay. So I'm going to continue this sinusoidal thing on for another half cycle. And the reason why I've chosen to do that is because I can see pretty obviously that this thing is a portion of a sinusoid, but I need to figure out what its angular frequency omega is. And the only way I'm gonna get that is if I know what it does for the entire, like for a full cycle, right? So my period, and I'm gonna call this T prime, because this is just for calculating omega, is very obviously four units of time, which I should have said seconds and not T. So once again, just struggling with units all across this test, apparently. Uh, and so from that, omega should be two pi over T prime, which is going to look like pi over two radians per second. So now I can say that this wave shape here, um, so I have an amplitude of one. So I'm going to have cosine of omega, so pi over two times t, and it's a negative cosine function um, because the amplitude starts at negative one at t is equal to zero instead of positive one at t is equal to zero. So now I've described what the signal looks like over one period, right? So from here, I could say that I effective is going to be the square root of one over two seconds times the integral from zero to two seconds of negative cosine pi over two t square that whole thing dt. And <laughs> 
I know uh, the trig identity that I'm about to apply is this guy right here. So cosine angle one times cosine angle two is one half cosine angle one minus angle two plus one half cosine angle one plus angle two. My only concern is getting the negative signs and all of that kind of stuff. Um, correct. So just so that I can make this easier on my not caffeinated brain, I'm going to make a quick change here. That's going to allow me to get rid of that negative sign out front, which is the thing that's bothering me. Although you've got your calculator in your hand, so you're probably realizing at this point you could literally just put that into your calculator and call it a damn day, which is perfectly fair. Uh, I'll do it by hand just for the sake of argument. Um, so that's going to look like one half plus one half cosine high T minus 360 degrees. And because it's minus 360 degrees, I could literally just get rid of that part because it's the same thing as minus zero. So If we're integrating this double frequency term over exactly two seconds, that is one cycle of the twice frequency term. So we know that that bit right there is actually going to go to zero. And so we have the square root of one over two seconds times one half times the integral from zero. That's going to be one half amp squared. Uh, integral from zero to two seconds of dt. And this should look like one over root two amps RMS. Probably. But since you're squaring the negative cosine, as long as you're squaring it correctly, it should check out okay. But it's not too difficult to do by hand. Yes, ma'am. It probably could. I mean, it effectively does. I just, it's early, and I wanted to make sure I did it correctly. So I interpreted that negative sign out front as a 180-degree phase shift, because that's perfectly valid. And then when I find out what... That I did that, I get the exact same result as if I had just ignored the negative sign completely. Because negative 360 degrees is the same thing as zero. Um, for what it's worth, and this is actually a pretty interesting thing that you guys could prove if you're bored enough to do it. Um, if you have a sine function and it's a full sine wave, doesn't matter if it's a sine or cosine. Obviously, a half sine wave, doesn't matter if it's a sine or a cosine. Or a quarter sine wave, doesn't matter if it's a sine or a cosine. It's just the amplitude over root 2 is the effective value every time. Doesn't work for any other portion of a sine wave, though. Next, I guess, unless you have any further questions about this, Camden. Okay. Yes, Liam. You can, yeah, so you can solve those fairly easily um, just using that same analysis process. The only thing that I would potentially warn you about, and I think there's a question like that on this test. Let me scroll up here and see whether or not I'm telling tales. Nope, nope, nope. 
may not be on this test, but I think it's on one of the practice tests. Uh, effectively, I might give you a circuit, or I, I say I might, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, that's either going to be like a non-inverting amplifier or an inverting amplifier, and I'm going to ask you what you could do to increase the gain of that circuit. So which resistors could you, like if you increase the feedback resistor, would that increase the gain? Yes. If you decrease the resistor R1, would that increase the gain? Yes. No other resistor will matter kind of thing. That is the extent of me asking you questions about specific amplifier types. It's a, a very simple and straightforward circuit where if you needed to derive the gain relationship, you could do it extremely easily and then go from there. But if you can look at it and see what kind of amplifier it is, you can also do that even faster. Yep. No, it's not until circuits two where I start hammering in all those different things and how we use them. Yes, ma'am. Fall 2019 number, I heard 30 something, 30 to 31. Okay. All right, so. I'm going to redraw this circuit up here. I'm just going to do this really loosely. Okay. So here's my 12 angle zero degrees volts connected to the positive polarity terminal of this. We have this generic impedance, which is just 12 ohms in parallel with J18 ohms. I'm going to leave it like that. And the positive polarity terminal of my voltage VX is uh, connected to the positive polarity terminal of my voltage source. And then the negative polarity terminal down here is connected to... minus J7 here's 16 ohms and let's see so the current IY is flowing from the negative polarity terminal of my voltage source to the negative polarity terminal of the voltage Vx. Anybody have any beef with how I've redrawn this circuit? So I think we can analyze that one pretty easily. You could find Vx using voltage division if you were so inclined. Uh, you could also all this voltage Vy, which you could determine using either voltage division or Kirchhoff's voltage law, and then divide that voltage Vy by the current Iy. Or if you were so inclined, um, you could source transform that and then use current division to find Iy. 
So it's drawn in a jackassy confusing way. But if you rotate it 90 degrees and combine things, it's really just a voltage source connected to two impedances in series. While, yeah, so to me, it's drawn like it's screaming, do mesh, do mesh. It's completely and utterly unnecessary. Yes, ma'am. Number, number 32. All right. So, you can do everything right here up top. Uh, that's a current. So I effective is going to be the square root of, let's see, our period is one. So I'm just going to put one over one, not bother with anything there. Um, integral from zero to one of E to the six T DT. And then put that in my calculator because E to the three T squared is just E to the six T. Oh, see you guys tomorrow.